We have the smartest 17-year-old girl in New York City here with us. She is a Intel Science Search finalist. It's Mimi Yen, and she has been playing with worms, and here she is on the set. Um, these aren't just the earthworms, though, are they? These, these are different sorts uh, of worms. They aren't. I work with a species called C. elegans, and it's very small. It's microscopic and it's transparent. But more importantly, it has a very interesting history, and that's why I study these worms. It's a, a look into their evolution, and it's also a look into the reasons why changes in behavior occur. Mm. Now, you're a high school student, full-time mm -hmm. high school student, and yet yes. you've been spending up to 30 hours a week, um, in some weeks, mm -hmm. working on this project uh, at a lab. Tell us a little bit about why you're doing this. Well, the reason why I do this is because I'm very interested in science. When I was in 10th grade, I got involved in a technological project. And what I had to do was design a piece of technology that we could use in 20 years. And the requirement was that this piece of technology would be able to help people. And that's really the goal in my research, is to end up helping people, you know, learn about science so that we, have, we can build a foundation of knowledge that other people can then work with. Hmm. To tell us what you discovered with, with the worms. You discovered something about the male worms and the way they behave. Yes. And this is, this is fascinating. <laughs> so in order I don't, to... And remember, I'm really dim, so... Yes, anyway. that's okay. I mean, so in order to understand... <laughs> she agreed. That's okay. No, no, that's not... <laughs> She's right. <laughs> She's easier. right, too. Continue. In order to understand this behavior, we need to look a little bit at the history of these worms. So originally it was a species of males and females. But somewhere along the line, these females develop the ability to, to produce sperm. And what that means is that they're now all hermaphrodites. And the only reason you would ever find a male in a population is if it arises by accident or you have put them in adverse conditions, such as very high temperatures. And when you have this very small number of males in a population with a lot of hermaphrodites, you begin to see changes in behavior that occur. And a lot of these behaviors are currently not understood by scientists. And so I work with uh, mating behavior. And the reason why I do that is because mating behavior is very important to evolution. So normally when a male mates with a hermaphrodite, what they do is that they deposit this plug on the vulva of the hermaphrodite. And the reason why they do this is because this plug serves as a physical barrier to other males from mating with the same hermaphrodite. You kind of want to ensure that your own genes are passed on. But the behavior that I work with is a variation of this normal mating behavior. And it occurs when you put a lot of males together in isolation. And you do this for practically their entire lifespan. And what you find is that these males begin engaging in the same plugging behavior, but you find these plugs on the heads of other males. And this is directly over their excretory pores. Wow. So what, what kind of insight does this give us about other species? Well, it kind of brings up the question of why certain behaviors exist in a population even if they don't seem to serve a purpose. When a male mates with a male, you don't get any offspring. And the purpose of mating is to have offspring. So uh, uh, studying this also tells us a little bit about the factors that affect these changes and why uh, these, this behavior continues to exist in the species. What, 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 conclu what conclusion did you draw about, the, um, about what, why it continues? Or well, are you just as puzzled as I am? Well, I'm still very confused about this, but we have made some headway on isolating the factors that affect this behavior. And we know that certain innate behaviors, such as reproduction, are governed by chemical signals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when you introduce a hermaphrodite to the environment, they begin secreting these pheromones or fluids. We actually are not sure what exactly it is. And these fluids control the direction of mating, like whether the male will mate with a hermaphrodite or mate with a male, since this is wired in the brain and you know you need other external factors to control the direction of the mating. Maybe where are you hoping to ultimately take this study and, and what are your, what are your plans for, for next year for college? Well I I got accepted into Yale University, so I'm planning on going. Congratulations. There. Thank Congratulations, you. that's, that's awesome. Thank you. And what, what, what will you study? What will you will you focus on? I'm guessing science, but yes, more science. specifically? Uh, biology. But yeah. also I want to go into the field of medicine because I want to work with something that is more applicable to humans. Mm -hmm. okay. Because my ultimate goal is to help them. Now will that be medical research? Sorry to Oh no, go ahead. Me would that be medical research? My my mother worked in medical research for a little while. Yes, uh, I am interested in medical research. So a lot of electron microscopes. I would imagine. Um, I'm not sure if I will be working with those, but um, we do have one in the school actually, uh, scanning electron microscope. Now I have to say, uh, you're, you're, it's very admirable what you're doing. You're a real inspiration to uh, young people and adults alike. There was a, a great quote in the, in the New York Times article about you. Everyone should check it out. It said, you know, that um, worm mating habits are generally not the type of chatter that high schoolers are known for. But what sort of advice would you give to other young people uh, that are maybe looking to pursue careers in science and medicine and are dealing with certain peer pressures at that age as well and, mm -hmm. and you know, time constraints? 
Uh, well, I think that uh, for me, I was really motivated by a factor that was not specifically tied to research. And I think that people should set a goal for themselves. And then even if it seems as though they can't find a direction to go in, they should um, still continue moving. And even if you don't have the confidence that you're able to finish a project or the confidence that you might not be smart enough for it, that, that really shouldn't be a factor at all. I mean, the point is that you just keep moving forward, whether or not you can see an end. I love that. Keep moving forward. Question. Mm -hmm. Do you have a Facebook account? I just recently made one, and this is specifically for Intel, so I have been sucked into the new generation. <laughs> just just as some of, some of us are thinking of, of leaving, I'm afraid we have to leave it there, but thank you very much. Mimi Yan, you, Mimi. who is thank the you. smartest uh, young lady in New York City.